This video will demonstrate the performance of a chi-square test for independence using a 2 by 3 model. Now the assumptions here are that we have a predictor variable or independent variable that is categorical and we also have an outcome variable that is categorical. But in this case, instead of the outcome variable having two possibilities, such as has a disease, does not have a disease, um, the outcome variable now can have three or in, in other situations more than three outcomes. So this could be a 2 by 4, 2 by 5, or 2 by 6 model, depending on how many possible outcomes there might be that are categorical. But in the example we're going to work with today, we have an independent or predictor variable that has two options, and then we have an outcome variable that has three possibility, three possibilities or three categories. We're also going to assume the measurements that have been collected are independent of each other. They're not related. We're also going to assume that there's uh, randomization um, in some way, random selection. And we're also assuming that the outcome, again, is, is in a categorical format. So the situation we're going to look at today, we have uh, our two variables. Um, our independent or predictor variable is smoking status. So you're either a smoker or a non-smoker. Um, and what we're going to try and determine is if smoking status has a relationship or has an effect on alcohol consumption. And we have uh, four levels of alcohol consumption, either no alcohol consumption, light, moderate, or heavy alcohol consumption. So the... Uh, Research aim here is to determine if smoking status um, has a relationship or has an effect on alcohol consumption. So our null hypothesis would be then that there would be uh, no effect of smoking status on alcohol consumption. In other words, the, uh, ex the observed outcomes will be equal to the expected outcomes. Uh, in other words, there should be equal distribution of people that smoke or don't smoke in the different levels of alcohol consumption. We're going to use uh, the chi-square value to make the hypothesis decision, and we're also going to use the p-value of less than 0.05 to make that hypothesis decision. So if we calculate a chi-square value that's associated with a p-value less than 0.05, then we will reject the null hypothesis and say that smoking status does have an effect on uh, alcohol consumption, and then we'll try and determine which level of smoking status um, seems to have or seems to be creating these these significant differences. If we have a p or a chi-square value that's associated with a p-value greater than 0.05, then we will accept the null hypothesis and come to the conclusion that there is no effect of smoking status or there is no relationship of smoking status to alcohol consumption. So in order to perform the analysis, we go to the Analyze menu. We go to Descriptive Statistics and Cross Tabs. And we want to move our variables into the appropriate um, designation. So in this case, rows um, is usually where we will place the predictor or independent variable, in this case, smoking status. And then the columns will be placed the outcomes, the potential outcomes, in this case, alcohol consumption. Now, under the statistics button, we want to make sure the chi-square option is checked because that is the type of test that we wish to perform, chi-square. So we click continue and then we go to the cells button and we want to make sure that we have checked the option for standardized residuals and what standardized residuals are it gives us an indication of how far a cell or how far a possible outcome differs the observed outcome differs from the expected outcome and the farther that cell differs from the expected outcome the more likely it's contributing to any statistical significance that we're seeing and that's what helps us really be able to see if there is a significant effect. So if we have a cell that is much higher than expected or much lower than expected relative to the no hypothesis of the expected values then that's going to drive the likelihood that we're going to have a significant outcome as well as be able to reject the no hypothesis. So this can act as, as a sort of post hoc test as we move forward. So if we have overall statistical significance with the chi-square value, then we can look at the standardized residuals to kind of get an idea of which cell seems to be contributing the most or which cells seem to be contributing the most to this, this significant relationship. Okay, once we've chosen standardized values, we can click continue. 
and then we can run the analysis by clicking OK. So what we'll see here is our uh, contingency, contingency table which shows our two options or two possibilities for our independent variable or predictive variable either being a non-smoker or a smoker and then we can see the four categories of alcohol consumption in this case that is our outcome alcohol consumption so we have uh, no alcohol consumption light alcohol consumption moderate and heavy alcohol consumption and within that we can see the actual observed values um, associated with um, the outcome so our next step is to determine if we have statistical significance in this relationship. So we're going to look at the Pearson chi-square value, which is a value of 14.80. And then we can look at the p-value associated with that chi-square value. And as you can see, it is less than 0.05. So we're going to be able to reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a significant relationship uh, between smoking status and alcohol consumption. In other words, some level of smoking status seems to contribute to someone having a certain level of alcohol consumption. Okay, so our next step then is to look at these residuals to determine which cell um, seems to be contributing to this statistical significance. In other words, which level of independent variable seems to be accounting the most for a certain level of alcohol consumption. And how we do this, depending on the alpha level we're testing at, if we're testing at the alpha level of 0.05, the standardized residual level we use to determine which cell is contributing the most to the significance is a point, or I'm sorry, 1.96. So either positive or negative 1.96. So if we have a cell that has a standardized residual that's beyond positive or negative 1.96, then we would say that this particular level of the predictor variable is contributing to the significance that we're seeing in this relationship. So as we look at our, our individual cells, we can see that the smokers in the cell for non-alcohol consumption, that has a standardized res residual greater than negative 1.96 or beyond 1.96. So this seems to be the cell that's contributing the most to predicting uh, alcohol consumption. So being a smoker seems to be the strongest predictor of what level of alcohol consumption you're going to have. Being a non-smoker seems, seems very close to contributing to this significance, but it's the level of or the possibility of being a smoker that seems to be the best predictor or contributes the most to this significant relationship between smoking status and alcohol consumption. So to summarize, we use the cross-tabulation chi-square test for independence in order to determine the relationship between a two-level uh, independent variable and a multiple level, in this case uh, four-level uh, alcohol consumption uh, outcome variable. So this, in this case, was actually a, a two-by-four um, cross-tabulation. We are then using the uh, chi-square value to determine statistical significance of this relationship. And once we determined that there was statistical significance, we were then able to look at the standardized residuals to determine uh, which individual cell in the contingency table was contributing the most to this, the statistical significance that we saw with the Pearson chi-square value.